It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. It's a passage where Christ talks about our relationship with God the Father as the intimate relationship as abides in a plant between the branches and the vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today's the last day of 2017, but I'll bet you already knew that. A lot of people use this time of year to think about their future to think about changes they need to or want to make in their lives, and especially after the Thanksgiving goodies or Christmas goodies that we've uh, chomped on throughout this season. So we make New Year's resolutions. I hereby resolve to go ahead and take my two-mile walk faithfully, at least more faithfully, in spite of my bad knee, okay? I resolved to exercise more faithfully, to tone up my biceps and tummy, uh, to take about an inch off of my waist. I thought about going for washboard abs, but uh, I'm too comfortable with my throw pillow abs to, (laughs) to work on that. I resolved to read one nonfiction book every two months. I thought that ought to be enough. <laughs> I should be able to live up to those resolutions, at, at least for a couple of weeks. Uh, maybe. For a lot of people, New Year's resolutions seem to be made to be broken. They're usually all about what I will do if I have the self-discipline to do it, or if I have the will to keep doing it through the year. As Heather explained in her welcoming statement, today's worship service is built around an updated version of the covenant service used by John Wesley in the 1700s in London to begin each year. And then he used it each time that he visited the societies, Methodist societies around England, and those societies later became local churches. Unlike New Year's resolutions, this covenant that we make doesn't depend on our willpower as much as it depends on relationship, our relationship with God. Jesus talks about that kind of relationship today uh, as you read in today's gospel. In his uh, teaching, Jesus used images always that the people to whom he was talking would be familiar and would understand what he was saying 
it would uh, enlighten what words he, he was speaking to them. And here he used the image of a vineyard to emphasize the kind of relationship we must have with God through him. A vineyard. Uh, does anyone here have or have you ever had a grapevine or a vineyard on your property or on your parents' property? Would you? Uh, okay, several of you have. Good. Uh, the rest of you, have you ever eaten a grape? <laughs> okay. Then, then you can kind of understand what Jesus was talking about here. Whenever I was a teenager, we had a grapevine in our backyard. Dad planted it and completely took care of it, and my job was to pick the grapes and eat them. Anyway, Jesus used this example of grapevines, and he said, I am the vine, and you, uh, Jesus, my father's a vine grower. And then he said, you are the branches. And by that, he meant the disciples to whom he was talking. He was, he was talking to them there in the upper room uh, just before he went out to the garden of Gethsemane to uh, where he would be arrested and taken to be crucified. And these were his parting words. And so he wanted to uh, speak to his disciples and tell them about this. But he also wanted to speak to his other disciples, you and, and me, because this is meant for us just as it was for his disciples who were there in the upper room. So God, the vine grower, Christ, the vine, Christ people, you and I, the branches. And Jesus then said, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. So what does he mean by those who abide in me? Well, perhaps he was meant those who feel at home, make their home with me, those who uh, will stay, re remain with me, no matter what happens. You will have fruit, bear fruit. And that's not just believing in God and Jesus. It goes beyond believing. It involves relationship. Jesus' picture of the vine and branches say to us that the disciples, you and I, are a part of him, and he's a part of us. Think of that. He talks about every branch, you know, you and I, bearing fruit, and, and we can't bear fruit without the vine because Jesus is our nourishment and our strength. It's without him, we don't get that nourishment and strength. And because God has made it that way, God can't bear fruit without us. Years ago, I read a statement that said, we are God's hands, God's feet, and God's voice. And that's quite a thing to think about. When I think about being God's hands, feet, and voice in the world, I often want to say, God, you know you could do better than this, don't you? But God depends on us, no matter how we feel. But it's such a blessing to be in that relationship where we can bear fruit for God. Well, what does he mean by fruit? I was beginning to think you'd never ask. <laughs> okay, you didn't ask, but two or three of you probably were wanting to anyway. The obvious answer to bearing fruit is it's helping one or more people to come to a relationship with Jesus Christ in their lives. That's the obvious answer, and I think it's a legitimate answer. But I think making other Christians is a result of the fruit 
that's born in us, that grows in us. I think the Apostle Paul nailed it when he uh, talked about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. I'm sure he'd be thrilled if he had known that now I'd be saying he nailed it. But anyway, he, he talked about the nine fruits of the Spirit as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Jesus talked about the first three of these fruits in his farewell talk with his disciples. That uh, is in chapters 13, 14, and 15 of the Gospel of John. In John 13, 34, and 35, Jesus says, I give you another commandment that you love one another, the first of the fruits, that you love one another, and just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. In John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in John 15, beginning at verse 9, it records Jesus, these of Jesus' words. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So abide in my love. The fruit of love grows in us. And, and when people sense that our love is Christ-like, that our love for them is genuine because of the love that we've experienced from Christ. It can't help but affect their lives. Another fruit of the Spirit mentioned by, uh, by Paul is peace. And Jesus in John 14, 27 said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. My peace I give to you. The word shalom uh, or peace was an ancient Jewish and early Christian word which meant complete spiritual, social, and personal well-being. And it was used both as a greeting and as a farewell by the Jewish people and the early Christians. Complete spiritual, social, and personal well-being. Peace. The author of a book called The Christian Word Book wrote that if a person has the right relationship to himself or herself, to others and to God, that person will have peace. He went on to say that the covenant is the occasion for a person assuming that relationship with God that brings peace. And if a person is faithful to the covenant, then God rewards that person with peace. In the three verses following today's scripture lesson, John 15, beginning with verse 9, Jesus said these words, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And I have said these things to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy may be complete a third of the fruits of the Spirit that Jesus talked about. Life filled with joy, just doesn't that sound wonderful? A life filled with joy. Years ago, well, it was years ago, I was in the Army, and I was stationed at Wildwood Station, Alaska. It was a semi-isolated post with only a small fishing village uh, that was very close by. One day I was sitting in the coffee shop on base when a soldier whom I really didn't know, I only knew by sight, came over and he said, uh, can I sit with you? And I said, sure. 
we began talking very quickly. Our conversation got to the thing that he really wanted to sit down and talk with me about. He said, if when you die, you were wrong all along about your beliefs and there is no God, think of all the things you've missed. I assume he was talking about the proverbial line, women and song. Well, I haven't had women, but I've been with one wonderful woman for 55 years, three months and 29 days. But who's counting? And as for song, so far the choir's letting me continue to sing with them. And I don't even like wine. Well, I'm kidding about this, but wine, women, and song, but the young soldier who had asked me about that was very serious. He felt perhaps I was wasting my life by trying to live a Christian life. I can't remember my exact words, and we kept talking for a while, but in effect I answered that I strongly believe in God and Jesus Christ. But if what you've posed should happen, I don't feel like I'd have missed anything because I can't think of a more happy, joy-filled life than living according to the way Jesus lived and taught. He taught not only to love God, but to love everybody as unconditionally as possible. I still believe that. A life with Christ should always be a life filled with joy. I've always felt that a somber Christian is an oxymoron. I've always felt that a hateful Christian is blasphemy against God. Of course, we'll always, or at times, have sadness because we're human. We're not immune to having ourselves or family or friends experiencing problems, illnesses, death even, in our, uh, in our circle. But God will give us strength and power and surround us with love to know that we're never alone when those things happen. So he'll get us through them. We'll get to the other side of those problems and again experience peace and joy. And that's what the covenant service today is all about. We put ourselves in God's hands. We make our covenant today and reaffirm our commitment to God. Being human will sometimes fail. That shouldn't deter us. It shouldn't deter us from signing that covenant and then taking that signed covenant home with it and putting it where it will constantly remind us of what we've done. It shouldn't deter us because any time we do fail, God will pick us up, dust us off, forgive us, set us on our way again. Knowing that means that our covenant should not be a burden. Shouldn't be a burden at all. But it should be a joy as we experience God's enfolding love with us. So I pray that your new year will be filled to the brim with God's peace, with God's joy, with God's love. Amen.